So this example here is just a power cycle, uh, and we're going to have to undergo four different processes, one to two, two to three, three to four, and four to one, fill in the missing entries in BTU, and we're also going to have to determine the thermal efficiency of this process. So let's start here with one process one to two. So at process one to two, we can apply the first law of thermodynamics, which just states that the change in total energy is going to be equal to the heat transfer minus the work. The total energy, change in total energy, is equal to the change in internal energy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. And we do have all those values, so we can just plug them into this equation and we'll have 950 plus 50 plus 0. And that's going to be equal to 1000. So we have the uh, total change in energy right over here is 1000. Now we can just fill in the blank up top. So into this equation right over here. And we'll have 1000 is equal to Q is 1000 minus W. And obviously, if we subtract 1000 from both sides, you're going to have that W is going to be equal to 0. Now at process 2 to 3. We can apply the same thing. So we have the change in total energy is going to be equal to Q minus W, heat minus work. So what we have here, so we have negative 450 is going to be equal to Q minus W. Actually, we also have W, which is going to just be equal to 450. And if we subtract or actually add 450 to both sides, we're going to have that Q is going to be equal to zero. Now we're also going to look for the change in internal energy. So once again, just remember that if you count for total energy change or delta E, you're going to have it equal to delta U, change in internal energy, plus change in kinetic energy. And finally, the change in potential energy. So we already calculated that um, delta E, or actually it's given to us, delta E is negative 450, is going to be equal to delta U, which we are actually looking for in this case, plus zero is the kinetic energy and then 50 is the potential energy. Subtract 50 from both sides, you already have a zero there, and you're going to have that delta U is going to be equal to negative 500. Um, it's also in BTU, by the way. All these values here are going to be in BTU. So we have negative 500. I apologize for the non-responsive Apple Pencil, by the way. All right, so now for process at three to four, see what we have here. So we have delta E, equals Q minus W once again. So delta E we have as negative 600. And then Q we do not have. So we'll leave it as Q minus W is going to be equal to zero. Obviously cross that out. You're going to have that Q is going to be equal to negative 600 BTU. Okay. And now we need the kinetic energy. So we're going to define the change in total energy or difference in energy is going to be equal to delta U plus delta ke plus delta pe and if we substitute what we have here so we have negative 600 for e is going to be equal to negative 650 for the internal energy u we don't have the kinetic energy uh, ke and then the potential energy we just have as zero so you cross out the zero add 650 to both sides and you will have 50 is equal to the kinetic energy 50 btu to be exact and finally, at process uh, 4 to 1, we have delta E, once again, equals Q minus W. And we can break down delta E to be equal to um, delta U plus delta KE plus delta PE. Just remember those two equations. And we already have delta E um, basically going to be equal to uh, 200 minus 100 minus 50 sorry for butchering the uh, numbers there but if you subtract all these numbers from 200 you're going to have the delta e change in total energy it's going to be equal to 50 btu so now we can do 50 is equal to q minus w and it looks like uh, q is just going to be equal to zero so we're going to have that w is equal to negative 50 btu so that's negative 50 for the work and positive 50 for the change in energy now I'm just going to add one more thing here for the process. So I'm going to add the total cycle work. So I'm going to go ahead and sum this column over here. 
So it's actually the cycle energy, I should say, not work. And if you if, if you take the vertical sum of the change in energy, you're going to have 1,000 minus 600 is 400 minus 450 is negative 50 plus 50. You're going to have zero. And because you have zero, you know that you did this correctly because just remember that if a process starts at one and it goes all the way to four and then it goes back to one, that means that you have no change in energy. So that means that delta E must be equal to zero. Now let's do the heat transfer in the work. So at the heat transfer, you can pretty much easily see that you're going to have a positive 400. And at the work, you're going to have a positive 400 as well. And that makes sense because just remember that Q must be equal to W. And because Q is positive, because Q is positive, that means that we're working with a Q in. And if you have a Q in, aka Q is great, I'll write it down. Q, if Q is greater than zero, then you have a power cycle. If Q is a negative number, you would have had a refrigeration cycle. So because you're working with a power cycle here, you can use the formula for thermal efficiency being equal to Q in minus Q out over Q in, which is also going to be equal to the cycle work divided by Q in. Essentially, this formula is the cost, or sorry, the gain over the cost. So in this problem here, we have the thermal efficiency being equal to the network, which is going to be equal to 400 divided by the heat transfer coming in, which was actually just 1000. Essentially, Q in, you'd have to look at the individual uh, heat transfers and you have 1000 here and then here you don't have anything in, in the zero you don't count this 600 because it's negative and then the zero is all obviously not counted either so if you calculate this out you'll have a thermal efficiency of just 40 percent